Hey pool players, what's up? It's Max Eberly and I'm back with another instructional pool video for you today. Today we're going to be covering one shot. It's a four rail position shot from the eight ball to the nine. And you'll see the target that I put on the table where I want the cue ball to land. Now this kind of practice can be very valuable for your game to help your cue ball position and to help make a tough shot where you have to use inside English and go around the table. And it's going to give you refined cue ball control, accurate shot making, and you can learn from your mistakes because you're not going to make every single shot. Now most of the shots I show you actually I make, I pocket the ball and I come around for a position. I'm going to show you a couple of the misses. I edited it because it will probably be boring. You don't want to see all the misses. But you want to see when you make the ball, where do you actually end up for the cue ball control where you want it to go. So that's really important. But also you want it when you do miss, you want to fig, you know, pay attention, figure out did you miss too full or too thin. And that's going to help you become a more consistent shot maker. So it doesn't matter how long it takes, take an hour or two on a shot like this. Uh, if you land on your target a lot, then make it a longer position route. This one's pretty long actually, so most of them are going to be shorter. Uh, so this is valuable for you, and I'm going to be talking to you. I'll put some voice overlay to tell you my you know, analysis on what happened, why the ball went too short, too long, or too wide, or you know, stuff like that. So I'll be commentating over the, over the shots. And before we get to the shots, remember to hit that like, and subscribe, and share, comment button there. Uh, help me grow my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much and I hope this helps your game. And if you have any ideas for videos that you want me to do or any questions, I'm going to do my best to make a video for you. And also check out my website maxeverly.com. There's links to all my other websites and products, uh, propoolacademy.com, zenpoolbook.com. Oh yeah, and if you like this hat, this is the logo for Propool Academy since 2012. Uh, you can check that out, Pro Pool Academy. And if you want to get some logo gear like this, check it out at qmax.com, C U E M A X.com. Got t shirts uh, with original pool artwork and logos on it just for you to show your love for the game. All right, thanks. Hope you're having a fantastic day, and let's get to the shot. Okay, so let's get started. First, I'm going to show you a couple of missed shots. And notice how I cut that too thin. Watch how far the cue ball comes because you get more speed when you don't hit much of the object ball. The cue ball is going to come off at a faster speed. That's why I went way past the target. This one, notice how the eight ball hit the rail. That means I hit it too full. And see how the cue ball slows down and barely is making it to that rail. So that's what can happen if you don't make the object ball. Now that one went in pretty clean. And now the cue ball, notice the speed is a lot better. Uh, the direction was just slightly off, a little bit long, and a few inches too short. Um, so that one, you see I cut it, I didn't hit the rail, it went uh, to the pro side of the pocket, pretty good line, and about a foot short. So these are the types of things, every shot you shoot, you want to notice if you missed, how did you miss? Uh, even if you made it, did you hit the rail going in? Did you hit it too thin? Um, so it's going to help you with your shot making. And you can always experiment with how much spin. I'm, what I'm using here in the beginning is a little bit of left-hand spin, maybe a tip or a tip and a half of left-hand spin. Actually, it's pr probably more like just a tip or less than a tip with this particular angle. Now I'm setting the cue ball up exactly the same every single shot. That one just slightly long and a little bit short. So you want to gauge, that's why you want to pay attention. It's so valuable to have that target there because you know exactly what went wrong or you, you know what you need to correct. You know if you need to hit it harder for next shot. You know if you need to hit more spin to change the direction. And you really want to master one shot and do that with several different shots, practice like this on many different shots, and that's how you really improve fast. Um, so it's one thing to get area position, but to be able to land on a target is something that only comes with practice. Okay, so that's a little bit short on the on the angle and on the speed. So those are the two the two targets you're trying to hit are the, the proper speed and the proper direction. 
So that one, that was only about an inch or two long and a little bit long on the angle. Okay, that was uh, just a uh, same real real close on that one. So that's how you make your adjustments based on what happened. That's why you got to really pay attention. Believe me, it's a whole nother level. When you can start to do this on every single shot, land on a specific target, you just incorporate it into your game. I know there people have made some comments about how it's going to slow you down and but if you incorporate it into your game where you can process this all real fast, you just see your target and then what that's going to do is help you learn the speed of a particular table really fast on a fine-tuned level. Uh, but if you're not picking these targets with your eyes when you're practicing, then you're really doing yourself a disservice because you could be getting better on every single shot. Now that one was really close uh, over the white part. Um, and it gives you something to be happy about, right? Uh, more of a specific target. Most people are just concerned about making the ball, getting general position. Um, so yeah, we want to make the ball here, uh, but we also want to land on the target for the cue ball. And how do you know if you actually land on the target if you don't know what your target is? Now look at that one. That, was, that speed was almost perfect. It was what was off was the line. Are you following me though? How, how do you know if you land on the target if you don't know what your target is? Now it's obvious for the pocket. You know you're trying to make the ball in the pocket so either the ball goes in or it doesn't. Um, but actually we want to make the ball in a certain part of the pocket. We usually want to make it clean or we want to hit the outside of the pocket which would be the facing that you can see down there. Okay so that was I think I hit the rail going in so a little bit full that might be why it came up a little bit short, but it was on a real good line. You know, it's hard to be a robot to hit the perfect speed every time. So it's not necessarily because you hit the ball too thin or too fat. Uh, here we go. Now we're, we're starting to get, get the speed and the spin for the shot. I remember while doing this practice that I started hitting it with about a, a tip high and a tip left instead of just the pure left. And I found I had the best results with a little bit of high left on this one. Of course, that's going to change if there was actually more angle. Say the cue ball was closer to the side pocket up there on the left side, then I would need a lot more left spin. But in this case, with this angle, I can use a little bit of high left. Not that much, actually, because the top spin wants to bend the cue ball down towards that bottom rail a little bit anyway. So it's naturally going that way with a rolling cue ball and then you add a little bit of left to just uh, accentuate the running English around the rails. So hit that one a little bit wide and that helped me get nice speed. That was the shot in the opening shot of the video. Um, another cool benefit about doing this is you're going to notice if you start to jump up or not. Because if you, you know, if you keep missing, you get tired of missing. You want to use that to propel you, to force you to be more disciplined. I mean, do you want to really be here all day missing the shot all day? No, I don't think you do. So you're going to be more in tune with what your body's doing, what your stroke's doing. Uh, you, you're just going to be more, have a better feel. It's going to help you develop a better sense of feel for your own hand-eye coordination and help you keep your body still. Because to be consistent at this, you're really going to have to keep your body still. You're going to have to figure out how to smooth your stroke out. You're going to learn how to do a consistent pre-shot routine don't don't start to rush it and just get down on the shot you're gonna you're gonna learn how to approach the shot and take care you know set up your right foot proper distance from the cue ball 
look at the object ball, get down, set up your stance, go through your practice routine. Now what's, this one's a little bit wide and a little bit long. So that means I probably need less spin and a little bit less speed. That's how you do it. You just approach it like a scientist. You just check your results. Don't get too emotional about it. Just notice what happened and then make an estimate on how much adjustment you need on the next shot. Go ahead and try it with that estimate and then see what happens. That's, that's really all you're doing. Looks like a pretty good stroke. Okay, this one, real nice line, a little bit too long. So that's the, the direction and the speed. The line would be the direction. And the speed is obvious. Either you come up too short. Now that one, see the line was almost perfect and then it just went a little bit too far. So you want to find a victory and something like that, if you hit the perfect line, you want to feel good about that. You want to notice that. You know you're on the right track. Now you just want to try to do the same thing a little bit softer. Another good line. And the speed, that line wasn't as good as last time, but the speed was almost perfect. A little bit long. Okay, that one a little bit wide. The cue ball is coming fast. So I'm hitting it thin. The ball went in the pocket, but you see how the cue ball reacted. It came really long on that one, uh, partially because I hit it so thin. So the thickness of the hit is always going to influence the speed of the cue ball. That's why. Oh, this one's pretty good. I like to tell people a great position shot is based off of an accurate shot going into the pocket. So if you miss a shot real bad and the cue ball goes exactly where you want, that's not exactly accurate because the ball didn't go in where you wanted. Had that ball gone in, the, the cue ball wouldn't have landed where you wanted. So usually a a good shot is also for the for the cue ball is also going to be accompanied by an accurate shot on making the object ball in the part of the pocket that you want it to go. That's a good line, just a little bit too long. So you just keep doing this like, like you're at work. You just get in, in Zen mode. You just want to dig in. Pick a, pick a shot that, that maybe you uh, have a hard time with. And just shoot it over and over like this and make a little mark the starting point for the for the eight ball and for the cue ball i mark with the chalk uh, i don't like to use those the donuts or the target the plastic targets because that affects the way the object ball comes off of that target and the way the cue ball comes off so i like it to be on the cloth so the chalk is a good is a good marker for the cue ball and object ball starting points Coming down a little bit long again. So I got to get pretty close to that corner pocket over there to end up on a good line here for the uh, target. Okay, so there we have a good line and a good speed, almost perfect. And these, you, you can celebrate. Now that, you can either be happy with that and move on to the next shot, or you can keep going. I know the, the cue ball is covering the, it's it's over the orange part of the target, which is in the in the very middle. Uh, if, if you want, you can just keep going until it ab absolutely lands dead perfect on the bullseye. I got some friends watching there. Uh, I 
So the cool thing about when you do practice like this, if you just work on one shot on your accurate position, you will be amazed at how accurate you're going to be with cue ball control on every other shot. Because what this is doing is actually teaching you the speed of the table that you're playing on. And that's very important because you need to know the speed for this table for every single shot. And this is very refined speed control for a table. And this, this is how you can get in stroke and get to playing real good real fast on a particular table. Now, now everybody doesn't have to know what you're doing. You could actually just be doing this with your eyes. You can pick a spot and it just becomes a matter of habit. This is this is a huge help for your game, my friends. This is no small deal for if you if you can develop the discipline to do this in your game, you're gonna get better than maybe you even ever imagined you could get playing pool. Uh, because this game is really all about cue ball control. You know how many talented pool players there are who can make shots out there? Um you can you can become a great shot maker with discipline and a consistent stroke, keeping your head still, don't move your bridge. If you have some talent for looking at the balls. I mean, there's kids who they start playing pool and they start making everything they look at. There are a lot of great shot makers out there. And that's without even learning a system. Although I like to teach uh, aiming systems and, and shot making systems, I think that's important how you look at the ball. Um, but even without a aiming lesson, there are kids out there who make everything without even having been taught they just have a, a knack. They can just see it. Now, I'm, I'm making it sound easy. Of course, that usually comes with practice. It's not necessarily easy. To develop direction control and speed control takes a lot of work because there's so many different places you can hit the cue ball. So many different angles that cue ball is going to come off the object ball. Um, you're not going to see a kid just jump up and, and start controlling the cue ball overnight or the first time that they play. But if properly directed, if you, if a kid is actually taught that at a young age that the cue ball control is very important and to try and develop that cue ball control, then you'll be, you'll, uh, it's amazing at, at how good you can become at controlling the cue ball, a kid. And that could be, you could be 70 years old and you're still a kid in pool. If you, if, if you've only just started playing a couple of years ago, that means you're a kid on the pool table where well, you can actually get good really fast at cue ball control. If you start to practice like this. And I'm going to do another uh, practice session where I'll, I'll do a little closer position shots. And you'll find that you, when your position route is only a couple feet or a few feet or a few inches from the object ball, you're going to be landing exactly on that target a lot more than on a shot like this where, you know, it takes, it takes a while. You get, you're getting close, not necessarily exactly on the spot. Unless you're just dead in the zone and you get, you start landing on that spot or you just hit the ball real good. But once you get cue ball control, even going around the table like this, you can very consistently land on or, or very close to your target. And you'll find, no, notice how almost every time where I'm close to the target, I have a good shot on that nine ball. Whereas if, if I was just going for a big area position, my position on the nine ball wouldn't be as good. So if I was playing, you know, 15 ball rotation or eight ball or straight pool, that's not, that, that is just not gonna cut it against a player who can control the cue ball with precision. Now there are, there are tricks if to uh, playing position. Uh, so see the line that is coming in? off the rail there. Now that's the line, the line that it comes off the rail to that target, that's your line of position. So that's direction. And then if you were to draw a line 90 degrees from that, that would be your speed. 
but where those two lines intersect happens to be at the target. So if you know how hard you need to hit it and the line, and you have a feel for that, you can actually see the intersection of those two lines. You could see both of those lines a lot longer than just where I have it on the target as a, as a small intersection of the two lines. But imagine that each one of those lines were like three feet long and you could see both of those lines and where they intersect is at the position target. It's a, those are valuable lines to, to start seeing and looking for. Okay, so that one I hit the rail a little bit. So that means I hit it a little bit full. Now it came off a little bit, a little bit soft. Had I hit that one a little bit thinner, maybe that would have rolled down onto the target. So the shot making is very important. You need to concentrate. You need to make that ball and you need to play position. So there's two sides of every shot. It's the shot, it's the ball going in the pocket, shot making, and it's the cue ball going to its target. That's a, the other side of the shot. So that's one thing that's really cool about pool is say golf, for instance, you got that, that golf ball is going, you want it to go to the hole or wherever you want it to go, but the, the, here we go, that's a good one. Looks like the target actually slowed it down. It might have stopped right on the on the bullseye. Um, but say in golf, you only have one ball that you're hitting. Pool, you have to hit the cue ball. The cue ball has to hit the object ball. The object ball has to go in. The cue ball has to go around the table, land where it's supposed to go. It's a very complex, wonderful game, and it takes a lot of concentration, a lot of focus, and it's definitely a sport because you have to execute the shot. It's not like you're playing chess. You could just play against a computer. You actually have to con conceive of the shot in your mind and then actually execute it in the physical reality of the throwing motion of the cue. Okay, so this was, I was done and I just wanted to try to land the cue ball on the target from this location going around three rails. And that's what I'm talking about when you, when you get used to a table you can do stuff like that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. All right, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Go out and practice some on your own. Set up a target. You can use a piece of chalk to mark where you want to land on the table. Uh, if you want to get some targets like this, I'm going to put uh, some links in the description to an Amazon uh, Prime product. You can just order and have it in a couple days. Um, so. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, hit that subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. Check out my website where you can get membership to Pro Pool Academy, get my DVD, Powerful Pool, get my book, Zen Pool. I got a lot of books coming out. And also remember, check out this hat. This has been my Pro Pool Academy logo since 2012. I'm putting it on some gear for you. And I got all kinds of stuff for you at qmax.com. And sign up to my free instructional newsletter. Also, because I'll keep you posted about new things that I got going on. All right, thanks for watching. Go out and practice, and I'll see you in the next video.